are going to be making book cover jackets for our next project. But before we even begin that project, I'd like to start with a little explanation of how you might use a ruler. I think a lot of us learned how to use a ruler at some point in the past, but maybe we've forgotten. And so this is a bit of an opportunity for a review. So an inch is divided into 16 increments. If you have eight of them, that would be a half inch. If you have four of them, that would be a quarter inch. If you have two of them, that would be an eighth inch. Now, sometimes though, you might have an unusual number, like you might have 13 of the small marks. Because the small marks are sixteenths, what we're talking about then is 13 sixteenths. Okay, so before we even get into measuring your, our books, I just want to make sure everyone understands how a ruler works. The inch is divided into 16 parts, and you're going to want to write down your measurements using fractions. I'm feeling really confident about how to use a ruler, and what we're going to do next is take some measurements of your book so that you can create a Photoshop file for the jacket cover design. Okay? Now, the first thing we're going to be doing is using the ruler to measure the height of the book. Now, remember, you want to start at the zero, not the one, when you're using that ruler. So start at the zero, measure all the way to the top, and see what number you get. For me, I get nine inches and then three-eighths of an inch. So I'm going to write that down on my piece of paper right here, and then I won't forget, okay? So the next thing I'm going to measure is the width of the front and back cover in inches. Okay, so I am going to use my ruler again, um, you know, looking for those fractions. And the number I get this time is, I'm just having a little trouble with this text box, seven and one quarter. Okay, so I'll write that for both the back cover and the front cover. It's going to be seven and one quarter, okay? Now, the next thing I'm gonna measure is my spine. And for the spine, uh, you know, same process again, just measuring the width of the spine. For the width of my spine, I'm going to get one and one sixteenth inches, okay? And then finally, the back and the front flap are really easy because I'm just gonna encourage everyone to do three inches, so I'm gonna enter I'm gonna write on my little form three inches for both of those things, okay? All right, so um, now I'm, I know you've already learned this in a math class, but I'm just gonna remind you a little bit that if you want to turn a fraction into a decimal, the way you're gonna do that is by dividing the top number by the bottom number in that fraction. Okay, and we actually do need to use uh, decimals, not fractions, when we do the Photoshop file. So I'm going to grab my calculator, and I'm gonna we're gonna do some work now with rewriting these numbers as fractions. Okay, so if I divide one by eight which is what I have for each of the fold lines. Those are each one eighth of an inch. What I have there is point, point one two five. okay? And that is gonna be the same for every one of my fold lines, so I'll just Put that in for every fold line. It's going to be 0.125. And just to explain a little bit about what that, what you know, why why we have to have the fold lines included in the width. Um, when you fold the paper over a little bit in a book jacket, what is going to happen is that you're going to. get, oops,
you're going to get a little bit extra paper used up in that spot. So that's why we need to enter the 0.125 for all those fold lines, okay? Now, the, um, the three doesn't need to be rewritten, so we can keep that as a three. All right, three and three. I do need to rewrite seven and a quarter, and for that I don't even really need my calculator because that would be 7.25. So I'm going to enter that here, 7.25. 7.25. And put that down here. And then finally, I need to convert my spine width into a fraction, so pull up that calculator again. If we divide 1 by 16, that gives us 0.06. Okay, so what you can see here is that I have rewritten all of these numbers here in, fra in, def in decimal, decimal form. And now I'm just going to use that calculator to add them all up. Okay. My total is going to be 22.06. Okay. So that's going to be really important because in just a moment, I'm going to start making a Photoshop file. And all of the numbers that I've used on this form are going to be critical to my success with the Photoshop file. So let's open up Photoshop. And we're going to go to New File. And hopefully you still have your form available because you're going to need the numbers on this form in order to fill out the size for the Photoshop file. So for my title, I'll say book cover design. And then for the width, I'm going to say 22.06 inches because that was the total I got down here. And then for my height, I'm going to say 9.375 because that's what 9 and 3 eighths is once I write it as a decimal. I want my resolution to be 300 pixels per inch, and I want my color mode to be CMYK. Now I'm going to click, hit Create. Okay, so you can see this is a very oblong horizontal shape, which is what we would expect for a book jacket. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some guidelines. And my guidelines are going to be wherever there's a fold. So I'll go to View, and then Guides, New Guide. It should be vertical. And the first one is going to be really easy because I just have that back flap, which was 3 inches, and then I'm going to add the fold line to that, so the total will be 3.125. I'll type into this text box over here, 3.125, add inches because we want inches, not pixels, and then hit OK. All right, so this line here corresponds to this line on the form. It's the fold between the back flap and the, um, the cover, OK? Now, for the next number, I'm going to actually have to add 3.125 to the width of the back cover and the next fold line. So if you want to use your calculator for this, that would be okay. Although you could probably do it in your head. I'm going to take 3.125, and then I'm going to add to that the width of my back cover, which is right here, 7.25, so plus... 7.25, and then I'm also going to add one, 0.125 for the next fold, so plus 0.125 equals. Okay, 
So the next guideline that I put down will be at 10.5 inches. So I'll go to View and then Guides, New Guide, 10.5 inches, and then I'm going to hit OK. All right. So if we're looking now at this form, this green line here corresponds to the fold line here between the back cover and the spine. All right. Now we're going to figure out where the next fold line is. So I have 10.5 for this fold line, but I'm going to add the width of the spine. So plus 1.06, and then I'm going to add 0.125, so plus 0.125 equals 11.685. So um, if, you, if you feel the need to, you know, round that, that would be okay. Uh, I think I'm going to go to window. Uh, view, guides. New guide, and then 11 point, let's check that number again. 11.69 is probably fine. 11.669 inches. OK. And we're just going to create one more guide. And to find this guide, I'm going to take the total I have so far. And to that number, I'm going to add the width of my front cover, so plus 7.25. And then to that, I'm going to add the width of that fold, so plus 0.125. And then I get 1906, so if I go to view and then guides and then create a new guide at 19.06, 06 inches. That gives me my final fold. Okay, and so as you can see, this is my book cover. I've got a section for the front flap, for the front cover, for the spine, for the back cover, and the back flap. Now, what I really don't want at this stage is for any of those guides to move. So I have one more final step, and I'm going to go to view. And I'm going to go to guides, and then I'm going to do lock guides because now all of those guides will stay in exactly the same spot, even as I add pictures and color and shapes and designs to this template. So I hope you found this helpful and um, enjoy making your book cover.